The House now comes to questions for oral answer, and the first question stands in the name of Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does he stand by his statement that, quote, efficient water management is a big part of New Zealand's competitive advantage and our clean and green brand? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes. Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, does he agree with the OECD Country Report 2011, quote, that as an exporter of resource-based goods and services, New Zealand's brand relies on the environmental integrity of its output and policies, and is his government achieving that? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I think that's one of the factors. I also agree with the OECD when in 2010 uh, we were rated as having the second best uh, water quality by Yale and Columbia. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the Prime Minister aware that the, that the Yale report that he just quoted from has now been updated and our ranking has moved from second to 43rd? And does his government take credit for the movement in our ranking in the Yale report from second to 43rd? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I'd need to look at that particular report and which pity he's taking out of it. Overall, what I can say is if you look at New Zealand, uh, we rank pretty well on most of those categories. And if you go and look at the 2011 Global Green in Economy Index, New Zealand is ranked first out of 27 countries for overall performance, which includes, amongst other things, leadership and green tourism. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, can the Prime Minister confirm that in his government's first four budgets, there has been an almost six-fold increase in the amount committed to freshwater cleanups over the previous four budgets, involving new initiatives with Lake Ellesmere, Rotorua, Rotuiti Taupo, lagoons like Waituna, Wonono and Wairapa, and rivers like the Manawatu and the Waikato, and doesn't this action more than words speak volumes about his and his government's commitment to improving freshwater management? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, I, I am aware of that, and all that demonstrates is that national and government cares more about water quality and water standards than Labor did when they were in government. Dr Russell Norman. A point of order. Point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Uh, I seek leave to table the Yale Environmental Performance Index from January 2012, so New Zealand at 43rd, no longer second. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? Did I hear objection? Yeah. There is objection. Dr. Russell Norman. Speaker, uh, supplementary. <clears throat> Does the Prime Minister stand by his statements where twice in this House last year and then again today he relied on the Yale report to justify his government's environmental performance and his former Minister for the Environment relied on it on a number of occasions as well, even though the updated figures show that under his government, New Zealand has fallen from second to 43rd in fresh water quality. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'm not sure, Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure I'd characterise it as relying on I'm saying that's one particular indicator what the government has relied on. Well, what the government's relied on is what it's done. And as opposed to Labor that did very little, National has an, introduced a national policy statement for fresh water, established the Collaborative Land and Water Forum, which is going well, appointed ECAN commissioners, which have delivered an operative water plan for Canterbury, launched the Fresh Water Fresh Start for Fresh Water Cleanup Fund, passed regulations for metering 98% of water takes, doubled the fines for non compliance with resource consents, and increased funding to improve our water to almost six times what it was under the previous government. That's what I've relied on. The uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora tato. Uh, to the Prime Minister, can I ask how will he ensure that councils and governing bodies respect the unique relationship that Fano? Hapu and Iwi have in respect of their kaitiaki obligations and responsibilities throughout their rohe? And does he agree with the Land and Water Forum that there should be better recognition given to Iwi tikanga and values in the National Policy Statement on Freshwater Management? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, that's somewhat a matter for local government, but what I can say is the Land and Water Forum and the wide participation in that grouping uh, is allowing for a very collaborative process. They've written two reports. The third report will come out in November. But talking to a variety of different members 
of the, that land and water forum, including environmental groups themselves, they are very optimistic about um, the results they see and the actions that have been taken. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, in reference to his earlier um, answer about the national policy statement, why did his government decide to weaken substantially the national policy statement on freshwater management against the advice of the Land and Water Forum and against the advice of the Board of Inquiry that was established to make the recommendation on the National Policy Statement on Freshwater Management. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Cabinet was, has, uh, considers a wide range of factors. We felt at the time with what the, the, uh, the National Policy Statement we came up with was best reflective of a balanced approach for what we were trying to achieve. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. How does his government's plan to subsidise dairy intensification in Canterbury and elsewhere, both through the Irrigation Fund, which has been mooted by the government, and the very large subsidies to greenhouse emissions coming out of the dairy sector, how will that result in cleaning up our waterways and help protect New Zealand's clean and green brand, the foundation of our economy? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, um, intensification of itself could worsen the problem if there wasn't a number of other steps being taken. But again, um, if you go and talk to the participants of the Land and Water Forum, uh, what they're saying is that both Federated Farmers and Fonterra are taking a much more responsible view uh, towards that intensification. Uh, one of the members of one of the major environmental groups said to me last week uh, that in principle if there was to be major irrigation in South Island he'd be supportive of a very large scheme because he thinks in terms of intensification that would actually help in terms of offsetting that. And in general if, if irrigation was to take place that takes pressure off the aquifers. So overall um, it's a balanced approach. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you Mr Speaker. Does he believe that his approach to talking about a balance between the environment or, and the economy, so essentially trading off a bit of environmental degradation for a bit of economic growth, is that approach the right approach to take, or should we take the approach that the environment is the foundation of our economy and we should stop degrading it, because it will fundamentally undermine us in the long run? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes, we can know. Um, what, what I think is important here is um, establishing how we can grow the economy uh, while in in ensuring that we preserve our environmental credentials. And I think when on balance, for the most part, we're doing that. In fact, if you go and have a look at um, areas of science, and the Global Greenhouse Gas Alliance is a great example of where we're increasing uh, potentially the methane and nitrate emissions that may come from agriculture because of intensification, but offsetting those through the scientific research that we're doing um, through the Greenhouse Gas Alliance. If the member wants to go back to the Stone Age where we do absolutely nothing, that's fine, but it won't pay for the many wish lists he comes up with every day. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Why is it... <clears throat> Why is it that all of the government's big economic policies, the winners that this government is picking, whether it be mining, uh, deep sea offshore mining, fracking, whether it be tear dairy intensification or subsidising greenhouse pollutions and motorways, why is it that every one of the winners that this government is picking to subsidise involves degrading the environment? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I, I reject that. There's been quite a substantial increase in areas of the economy uh, where th there is no impact at all on the environment. And if the member wants to come and support us on the National Convention C Centre uh, brought to us by Sky City, or the member wanted to get out there and support us when we bought the Hobbit movies and the 3,000 jobs to New Zealand, I'd look forward to it. But the member probably won't do that. He'll just carry on whinging like he normally does. Question number two, the uh, Leader of the Opposition, David Shearer.